Alright, volume three in Beyond Dumb No. Yeah, <laughs> Beyond Bad and Stupid. Uh it's probably a better way to say it, but it doesn't matter. So Piero, of course, made us you know, he's as reckless as Nietzsche. He's a slob. Um and a comment slob to boot, I'll get to those. Um, but anyway. Um so he's done a video called saying Nietzsche definitely not nihilist. Um not a really great sentence. Anyway, uh, and he's he's reading the Darwin quotes from Nietzsche, you know, where Darwin rags on, where, where Nietzsche rags on Darwin in, in this reckless, sloppy, you know, insipid matter almost. It's it's insipid, considering Darwin's, the way how, how Darwin was so cautious and so careful. Nietzsche, by comparison, is a slob, and it's just that obvious. All right, um... So as I made clear, so so he reads this passage that I sort of referenced, and I sort of pointed out that I found three different translations of it. The use of the word spirit, mind, and intelligence interchanged. Okay, so in the three translations, and I'd say the word intelligence is the most precise. I think it, the, the passage makes the most sense using the word intelligence. Our mind and spirit is the least coherent. Um, so, <clears throat> and, and clearly I pointed out that Darwin would take about a millisecond to say, wait a minute, I wasn't talking about the evolution of our knowledge base, all right, I'm talking of, uh, of a knowledge base, I'm talking, so, I mean, Nietzsche's argument was basically, look, the strong don't need to be intelligent, the Tyrannosaurus doesn't need intelligence, okay, <laughs> it just says, something starts talking too much, it just squashes the fucker and bites its head off. It doesn't have to have an argument with something. It doesn't need to debate it. It doesn't need to think about it. It just says, me, hungry, smash, smash. I mean, it just doesn't need to care because it's so powerful physically. All right, and so Nietzsche's point was is that, um, no, look at evolution. There's lots of these little squirmy bits, okay, that are weak physically, but they have this attribute of a scheming brain. They can scheme. They can trick the Tyrannosaurus. They can catch his little foot on fire and you know, stick a match in his toe and give it a hot foot and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, they can, do, they can do tricks. Okay. <laughs> um, but that wasn't what Darwin was arguing. Darwin was never arguing that might makes right. These aren't Dar Dar Darwin never said survival of the fittest, I don't think. Okay, so... That's not even his term. And regardless, the point of fitness wasn't like it's a, you know, Schwarzenegger contest. Darwin would have already told you that it has nothing to do with Schwarzenegger. It just has to do with having the right equipment for the, the battle you're battling, for, for the arena you're in. That's it. There's no, you know, gun. Okay, you could walk in, you could, you could walk in, the other guy's, you know, eight feet tall, weighs 300 pounds, has a, a muscle body to fat body ratio of 0 .05, yeah, and you got a 9 millimeter in your pocket. I mean, it's going to be no contest, <laughs> okay? There's, there's no contest. Um, and Darwin wouldn't concede that. So it was just a stupid, reckless, sloppy mischaracterization of the science for the purpose of slandering the science. And that's all Nietzsche was about, was slandering shit. Okay, he was a grotesque propagandist. I don't know why you people are clinging to him. He didn't make any, he didn't make coherent statements. The universe is in constantly changing. No, it's not constantly changing. It's run by really crude, very ecstatic, very, very, very consistent forces. It doesn't do bizarre and interesting things ever. <laughs> it really doesn't. Uh, it's as dumb as a stick. It just does sticky stuff. It does really dumb stuff. The universe does rock full off cliff. The universe does really simple things in bulk. And it's only this little tiny part of the universe, you know, where it got all moldy, uh, where, where it started to rot and decompose, you know, the universe decomposed, that it got funky. So anyway, so we'll deal with some of these comments, which are just, you know, stupid. And <laughs> speaking of, so to be serious, uh, she had to show up. Um, anyway, and, and what she's saying here isn't good entirely, but, but yeah, we'll get to her. Because, oh, anyway, so, so Piero makes this video. Nietzsche's definitely a nihilist. 
And what he didn't demonstrate is anything on the subject of nihilism. He didn't demonstrate anything on the subject of value. He just talked about Nietzsche's statements on Darwin. I wasn't using Nietzsche's statements on Darwin to demonstrate Nietzsche to be a nihilist. I was using the statements on Darwin to demonstrate Nietzsche to be a reckless asshole uh, and a rude one to boot. So, you know, get your facts straight. And again, um, there's it's really no, no point in... I, I mean, it's really difficult if we're going to sit there and argue what somebody is saying when we can't agree on the translation that's relevant. So that's, you know, you know that, that makes it this a, a very difficult subject. You know, to open this door and say, let's discuss something that we have, you know, three different, very different translations of the same thing. Anyway, I'm not sure I understand your point, but it seems to me that Nietzsche has Darwin misunderstood. Darwin, <coughs> in this quote from Twilight of Idiots, if he is asserting, as it seems to be, that Darwin was claiming that only the strongest survive, that is not what Darwin was saying. He said that most adaptive to their present environment survive. So to answer your question, why do rabbits and guinea pigs survive, they are better adapted to their environment. It's not spirit. Well, anyway, it's not even intelligence, okay? Rabbits don't, aren't even a, an applicable um, example for Nietzsche's purposes in Nietzsche's quote, okay? Nietzsche wouldn't use a rabbit as an example of the weak organism that maximizes intelligence. Rabbits are kind of dumb, okay? And rabbits survive because they do have, they're very well-equipped organisms. They run damn fucking fast. They have really good um, fat to muscle ratios. Um, they're very powerful for their size. They have nice, good claws. Um, they can eat almost anything, um, and they got these great radar ear things going on, uh, and, uh, yeah, clearly, and they breed sufficient to their circumstance. They accept attrition. Um, ex you know, attrition is accepted, uh, because they're so capable of, of gaining sustenance out of the environment by eating almost anything, weeds, um, <clears throat> that... <clears throat> they're able to produce plenty of offspring to feed the predators, <laughs> you know, to quell their thirst. Um, anyway, it's not an indictment of Nietzsche to realize that his views on Darwin were slanted by his insistence on applying his will to power. Well, certainly that is the problem here. This will to power thing is a constant badgering um, uh, by Nietzsche. It's it's retardedly insufficient description of what a human psychology is, will to power. Um, we can clearly understand the difference between our hunger, our horny, and our ambitions. We can understand the difference between ego and these other uh, more crude, functional passions. Um, and it, it's just silly to describe them, put, throw them into a, a, a bucket, and call them all the same thing, when one's a fish, and one's a dog, and one's a frog. Um, we're made up of different components, and they should be described for what they are. They shouldn't be just thrown into some will-to-power nonsense. Yes, we have desire. Duh. Let's call that. We, we could say that. We have a we have a imposition of desire. Um, but to call it a will-to-power is a slander, in my opinion. A reckless, sloppy statement. Darwin published, this is the part that I just found hilarious, Darwin published On the Origin of Species in 1859, and Nietzsche published Twilight of Idiots just a few years later in 1888. Twenty-one years is not, no, twenty-eight, twenty-nine years, okay, is, yeah, it's almost thirty years. Thirty years is not just a few years later. I mean, thirty years and Darwin, can, and let's understand, Darwin wasn't some obscure book, like, like you know, that just sat out there. Darwin's On the Origin of Species was probably the most um, controversial book ever introduced. You know, its introduction was so, so, so I'm just saying it got huge critiques, huge uh, criticism, huge talk about, huge, huge, huge. So... It, it's kind of stupid to say 30 years because there was a huge amount of conversation about the origin of species in those 30 years.
So the concept of Darwin's evolution was a new was new at the time. Many intellectuals did not really get the subtleties of evolutionary theory in this period. Well, if they, they only didn't get them if they didn't want to get them. I, I would argue, and Nietzsche clearly doesn't want to get them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so this guy says something. Spirit does not make it a good or noble trait. Um, spirit used. Okay. So again, I, I just I'm, the spirit word is just absolutely useless as a word. I think the word to use is mind or intelligence, and then you can have a conversation about that quote. But otherwise, I, I, spirit is not even a. That's not a meaningful word. Um, useless drivel. All right. So <clears throat> here's my video. Um, and again, it's you know same old crap. So it starts off with the same old asshole. What about masochism? I've already dealt with mas masochism. Go find a masochist. What do you have? You have a horribly insecure person. Okay, now a masochist who's not a sadomasochist. So let's just start with masochists plain. Um, they are basically have a debilitating, okay, horrid, um, painful self-image. And they are using pain, attention, just like assholes like you, maybe even, you know, you know, little comment shitheads, um, just to get attention. Any attention is good attention. It's the same kind of thing as masochism, in a sense. So basically, they're saying any kind of pain directed at them um, or whipping of their uh, um, 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 flawedness releases them from that pain. So they are, in effect, using pain, a smaller pain, to get rid of a bigger pain. My argument was is that we are in sentient conditions. And what I'm saying is, is do you actually think that masochists are perpetually in bliss? That they have no state of conscious being that is non-bliss? Obviously, when they're not in the process of receiving punishment, they must be in some sort of negative condition relative to receiving the punishment, if they enjoyed the punishment, correct? So they're already, there's the establishment of my point, which is we are in different states, states that are preferable and unpreferable. That's what I said in my video. Obviously, you don't listen to videos. You're just uh, as sloppy as a Nietzsche here with this bullshit, okay? Uh, masochism has nothing to do with whether or not negative and positive psychological states exist or not. Masochists exist in positive and negative psychological states. And if you knew anything about masochism, you would know you would not want to be a masochist. Because a masochist is always in negative states. And he's struggling desperately using negative states to get out of ne worse negative states. He's getting out of the dungeon just trying to get into the prison. You idiot. <laughs> so anyway, uh, keep making videos, blah, blah, blah. And, okay, Antikanabot had 2H plus debate with a boy, 2 hour plus. But of course he could never handle well, whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, Antikanabot, he's not a, I don't think he could debate anybody anyway, but I don't know where you saw that debate, but that would be interesting. All right, um, film this comment up. No, we're not looking for that. Uh, I'm only 19 seconds in. Nietzsche is anti-nihilist -ni as it you get. Okay, so this is Piro's idiotic style, which I just find obnoxious and idiotic. Look, I'm only 19 seconds in. Nietzsche is as and 19 seconds. Don't do this. I've already requested, so, so you have a really poor memory, too. I've requested you don't do this. This is what's gotten you blocked in the past, and it may get you blocked again. What are you doing, all right? I don't need your, you know, you can't read something. You can't listen to a goddamn, it's only a, what, a 15-minute video? You can't, you don't have enough discipline, as Antikonovod would say, to wait till somebody finishes their video before you start this shit. I mean, it's just stupid, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's stupid. <sighs> all right, which is better, not having a sword in your head or having an arrow in your head? So, again... Simple, simple statement. Here's the proof of value, okay? I gave the simple thought experiment, okay? It doesn't matter what you do, whether you make it 6 million Jews in a, in a concentration camp, 6 million Jews eating chocolate ice cream. Um, clearly, they, there's no reasonable argument, no rationally constructed argument that could ever be constructed where you could say 
if you had the control to create one of those things to be forever, that it would be sensible to press the concentration camp button rather than the chocolate ice cream button. It's, it's unassailable as a truth that one is preferable than the other. They are not the same. They're, they're just not. There, it, it does not. There's no way to make it make sense to say it doesn't matter. It just doesn't make any sense. It can't make any sense. There's no statement you can produce, no paragraph you can produce, no anything you can produce to make it make sense that it doesn't matter what button you press. And so here again, you, you get a clear thought experiment and you change the rules. The, two, the comparison's not arrow and swords. I'm not comparing arrows and swords. I'm comparing a state that's good with a state that's bad. I'm saying good and evil do fucking goddamn exist. Okay, it's goddamn evil to have Jews in concentration camps. It's goddamn good to have them eating our goddamn ice cream. And your counter argument is, um, well, you know, let's let's. Uh, is it better to be burned alive with uh, with gasoline poured on you or turpentine? Fuck you. I mean, this is just bullshit. And this is what you do in the middle of a goddamn video. You fucking asshole. Um, anyway. Puro. Again, this is going to talk out of nowhere again. This, it, it, this erroneous fucking crap. Of course they create value. They didn't create the same value. They define their own values. Well, that's again, the, the, the argument is, is that's not the rules of logic. You can't create your own values. We're clearly saying this is an unassailable value, that consciousnesses are in different states and that these states are good or bad. That's the unassailable logic that we start with. All right, and so you can't do this to find their own crap anymore because we've already established that there's an absolute fact here, all right, and, and, and you just keep pretending it doesn't exist. No, it does exist. We can, I've said these fucking words. We can establish the existence of uh, values by looking at the extreme cases. The extreme cases prove its existence. The only thing to, to be debated is the nuances of the meaning of different things, like, um, you know, uh, watching the birth of your first grandchild versus dying of cancer. Now, those two things, putting those on the scales and trying to figure out which ones are the, you know, what, what's the values here, whether one's worth the other thing, um, that's where it gets a little bit uh, gnarly and tricky. All right, but the fact of its existence has already been, that's established, and I've heard no counter-argument, no rational argument, no logical argument, because you can't, unlog you can't logically unravel it. It's unassailable fact, all right, and it was certainly accessible as an unassailable fact in Nietzsche's day. He certainly could imagine, well, there is a big difference between me sitting in a pot of boiling oil uh, and me eating my lunch. Sorry. All right. Um, sorry, Piro. Sorry, Piro. Only have one hand back burnt up. Oh, uh, sorry, don't understand that. Gary and Piro online uh, debate would be interesting. We, we do debate online. And then Piro lies and uh, doesn't do what he says he's going to do and uh, makes videos saying completely opposite things because he's a fucking cunt. A skanky fucking cunt. All right, Piero again. Um, N, N says <laughs> you can and must establish values. Well, again, establish values internally, okay, um, that have no correlate to reality is meaningless. Those aren't values. Those are lies. So, yes, Nietzsche says you must establish a lie to live by. Okay, I'm saying no. If you're going to be a philosopher, you have to find the truth, and the truth is out there to be discovered. And we know the truth has something to do with the conditions of sentient organisms in terms of value, that they are somehow connected. All the strings of this word value somehow connect to the welfare of sentient things. There's nothing else we can observe in the universe besides these sentient things that could possibly derive um, substance and meaning. Uh, the welfare of a rock is always going to be meaningless. Um, thing is, some <clears throat> thing is, someone can assign value to a gentle death that is positive, as N did, but someone else can assign negative value to all death. Well, those are two different subjects, so that's again irrelevant. I mean, there's no point. You cannot put 
apples and oranges on the scales. They are not things that are applicable to these measurements. So these are two different subjects, death itself and whether or not there is a, a, a value in dying less badly. Um, one is rock solid. Um, the other one is a question of perception. The only resolution to this is that they are both values. Well, again, this is, again, there's, you're either trying to describe reality or you're trying to describe uh, 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 your, your lies, okay? And that's all there is. There's, there's, there's truth and there's crap, all right? So to call them both values is to say that any value is a value. No, some values, some statements by brains are crap. Some statements by brains are accurate descriptions of reality. Those are the two things. That you can't, you, you know, statements are what we're judging here. So when you say values, that's already breaking the point. What you ought to say is contentions, assertions, okay? So, so uh, <laughs> the only resolution to this is that they are both assertions, right? And assertions that have to be tested, okay, logically. Um, you like to <clears throat> use easy comparisons. No, I don't use, I, I, I don't like to use easy comparisons. I'm saying I'll use, I'll, I'll delve into the hardest of the hardest comparisons. I'm willing to, I think those are the most interesting. I'm just having to, because you people are so stupid and ignorant and fucktarded, I'm having to use these extremes to establish the existence of these value statements, the statement that value exists in the reality. It's unassailable as a truth. Okay, Nietzsche was wrong, fundamentally wrong. Value is an absolute fact. It exists. It's an invisible property. It exists, though, and it's a property flowing through sentient life. It's unassailable as a fact. You can't make a rational counter-argument to undo the concentration camp versus chocolate ice cream scenario. I'm using the easy comparison, the extreme comparison merely to establish the existence of the thing. I'm showing you the damn Tyrannosaurus uh, footprint. I'm showing you some saliva he left behind and, I don't know, the drag of his penis on the ground. And I'm saying, look at this thing, it's goddamn big. I'm saying it exists, you stupid cunt. <sighs> anyway. Um, between suffering and joy, a rare choice. I don't use suffering and joy, but whatever. That, that's your critique. Uh, but even those fail with the masochist. So now you're doing it. It's just so stupid. I've made, I mean, literally, it's been in at least 50 of my videos where I've had to deal with this idiotic masochist argument that has nothing to do with the subject. Masochists are not in a state of euphoria. Go find a masochist and say to yourself, do I want to be this fucktard? This guy's a psychological basket case. All right, so this is an idiotic argument. Masochists are not in some sort of steady, blissful state where they have no conditional differences, where they are not, they don't get like something they don't like, like a, they, they have, there's no sensation they don't like. That is bullshit. You can't say a masochist should want to suffer, but you can say that regardless, you do not value suffering highly. I, I don't even know how to interpret that mush. You can't say a masochist should want to suffer. I don't even know what that means. Why would I want to say that? That. <laughs> you can only say that regardless, you do not value suffering highly. I don't even know what that means. You do not value suffering highly. It doesn't it's valuing highly. You've already conceded the existence of the value. So again, how can you possibly be nihilist and talk about highly valuing? You're apparently valuing to some degree. If you're going to say there's a there's a relativity here that's relevant, so even that doesn't make any sense. God damn! I mean, what just fucking useless mush this is. <sighs> anyway, somebody says, thank you for existing. Oh, it's a girl. Um, anyway, um, all right, so let's do the to be serious. Frame 616, Antikavantavad says that to establish value, you must provide something that is independently verifiable. Your reply is, again, is 
Again, through logic, it is independently verifiable. If you can agree on the premises, then it's independently verifiable. Yeah, my argument is, is that the premises are beyond reasonable contention, okay? I'm just saying you have to agree to be a sensible, rational brain. If you're not going to, that's the premise. The premise is you have to be minimally sane. That's the premise. Because a minimally sane individual is going to concede that their consciousness is in different states and that those states are decidedly different. Not a little bit different. They're decidedly different. That it's really good to feel good and it really sucks or is evil or is bad to feel bad. The whole vocabulary, every word that has a value taint to it has been constructed because we do notice it. It's beyond not recognizing it. You can't not recognize it and be sane. Only the preposterously insane don't recognize the distinction. Only. That's the only way you cannot recognize or accept the premise. That's how crude this premise has gotten. That's how imbecilic this conversation is. Is that the premises, which are undeniable, unassailable logically, I'm having to argue. <laughs> so, but again, the, my point about agreeing to the premises was merely another way of saying you have to be minimally rational. The problem is exactly that. From your own statement, to find a <clears throat> version of objective value, there must first be agreement on the initial premises. Well, again, the initial premises is that uh, consciousnesses are in um, variable states that um, uh, 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 fit into the category of preferable or unpreferable, of uh, good or bad. That is exactly why all attempts at deriving absolute truth from logical premises fail. So again, so now she takes this statement and perverts it to say that I haven't established those premises because I'm asking somebody to agree to them. The fact that I'm saying you must agree to them before we can have the show, show you the proof is just a necessity of logic. I ha you have to agree to them. If you're not going to agree to be sane, I can't prove anything to you. You can only understand the proof if you agree to be sane. You know, duh. <sighs> All right. Nihilism does, nihilism does not necessarily follow from realizing that fact, by the way. Well, I'm sorry, it does. You, can, you could argue that value is, from, from our perspective, undecipherable, okay? That it exists, but we can't tell. It's just too complex. It's too gnarly, too messy. We can't figure it out. But you can't say that it doesn't matter whether the six million Jews are in the concentration camp or the six million Jews are eating chocolate ice cream. You can't say... I believe it doesn't, there's no distinction between those two states of being, that there is no preference, that there neither is preferable, that it wouldn't matter whether you just flipped a coin or flipped a switch with your toe. You don't have to care. Uh, there's nothing important at stake. Those statements, I say, are insane statements. You would have to be insane to believe that. There's no rational way to defend that as a statement, my opinion. Your own testimony of your own sentience screams an alternative truth, and I will certainly testify at your trial that you're a motherfucking insane cunt, because it certainly, from my experience with my consciousness, matters whether I am um, ill or not ill. It makes a huge fucking difference. Um, okay. Uh, it just means that the values you live by cannot be absolute. Well, again, I'm saying there is absolute truth here as value statements. The absolute truth is that the value does exist, okay, that it is uh, created, uh, connected directly to the existence of sentient welfares, and now game on in terms of establishing how we balance these different attributes of conscious states. We have different conscious states, we have different desires, mechanisms, we have different ambitions, but the truth is we are in a state of being. That state of being is either uncomfortable or comfortable. 
and that the comfortable state is the preferable state. Duh. Um, they can be humanistically, humanistic and deeply concerned with sentient suffering, though. Yeah, they can also love stuffed animals or Barbie dolls. They can love to watch soap operas. They can love all kinds of silly bullshit. That has absolutely nothing to do with what the value is of those ambitions or fulfilling those aspirations or desires. Okay, there is a consequence to our gratification. Every, every step we take... Um, has a taking tied to it. There's a value exchange taking place with every breath you breathe. Um, you're consuming a biosphere, um, a dependency on a biosphere, and that biosphere is suffering. You have to account for that. You have to produce something of greater value than the harm you're producing. What they can't be is in some sort of absolute value derived from an infallible logical proof. Well, again, that, you're just wrong. The infallible logical proof is the fact that I can prove the premise statement that value exists beyond reasonable contention. Uh, only the insane could argue against its existence. And um, I have, in other videos extensively describe the psychological manifestations and explain that it really doesn't matter whether you're rooting for the Red Sox or the Yankees. The rooting is the, the, the psychological concept. And there's only, the only value is, is in your sense of satisfaction that your team is winning. Um, that is an advantage in my of a humble opinion because they have to be derived by each of us trying to make the world a better place. You can't make the world a better place if you don't understand the concept of value. So that's just an idiotic statement. Uh, derived by each of us, then we see that uh, Mohammed will end up running over a kid's arm because he's derived his own sense of value. Um, and he has no value for the welfare of the child or its psychology. It, it, the only value is Mohammed says so. And it's an idiotic value. It's a irrational. It's um, illogical. It has uh, misappropriated, it, ha it has misdescribed reality and the value reality that exists. And it is wasting and squandering um, suffering. And that's just the truth. And so again, just making it up your, on your own is bullshit. There's a truth. You either accurately describe the truth or you inaccurately describe the truth. I'm stating that the accurate description of the truth is is that what we basically come into the world with is a, a big pile of negative and resolving that negative gives us the illusion of a positive. We climb out of a negative earth towards a positive sunlight. We never realize the sunlight. We just realize gaining ground on our negative condition. We elevate our negative condition to a less negative condition and call it a success and it is in fact failure. I mean, it's certainly a success from just sitting at the more negative condition, but it is failure as anything that can be called a positive experience. Um, uh, all right, a better place or not, and not from some mistaken drive to define absolute value from faulty logic. So this accusation you're making, that first I have a drive to de to a drive to derive a drive to derived absolute value no it's not the drive the drive is to um, um, find the truth in the reality to accurately describe what's happening that's the ambition that's the drive um, and the logic in my opinion is unassailable and you have done nothing to assail it you've only slandered it which is typically your behavior. So again, you haven't argued how value hasn't been established as existing by simple thought experiments, by simple looking at the extremes of the gigantic footprint it has left. <laughs> okay, you can't deny the fact that value does exist. It's impossible to rationally argue. Again, deal with my thought experiment. Deal with the simple truth that we know that it would be better for the Jews to be eating ice cream instead of being in the concentration camp in and of itself as experiences with no other circumstantial event, just 500 years of one or the other. It's clear 
It's unassailable. You can't argue around it. It's just a fact that consciousness creates value. <sighs> Jesus, people are idiots. So anyway, I don't know if there's anything on the Antakantavad video. Let's see if there's any new comments here. Hey, Trick. Well, I won't bother reading his. Three of them. Shit. He probably agrees with me. Exactly. People like Andy don't understand that value is an uh, experiential quality of specific states of matter and energy playing through time rather than a thing. It is an output of a thing. It's more like round, flat, light, dark sound rather than ball paper. Yeah, well, obviously the value is something we create. So, yes, it is something that eh, we, um, we generate it. We, we, well, I said it. I said reek. Reek. We reek of it. <laughs> yeah. We smell of it. Anyway. Uh, moving, so we'll move to Anaconda's page. There's just really nothing very useful here, unfortunately. Um, this guy's such an asshole. Um, it's out there since many out there can agree to it. Well, again, so this, this many out there can agree to it. It's totally irrelevant. I mean, the argument from popularity, who cares? That does, that's not the proof. Our hunger and anger values, why or why not? Well, that's sort of irrelevant, too. Um, self, do in the morning. Self-discipline. In that self-discipline will be included awareness of the bewitchment of language. If there is a word, there is a thing. I read in Daniel Dent like Lee about the new philosophy, science, evolutionary cognition. Well, yeah, that's just, I mean, isn't that itself? Coming up with a phrase like evolutionary cognition is, as a way of explaining language or clarifying language, is sort of oxymoronic, I think. Um, I mean, that's failure on the subject of failing. I mean, that's just failing, writing a book about failure. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, clearly, um, our language is broken. We have lots of words that have no reliable meaning, um, no meaning consistent between one individual and another, and that's a huge failing. Um, but whatever. So there really wasn't anything here. It's really just not very useful. Um, anyway, so until next time. And such. But anyway, Nietzsche was the, the the nihilism is in his description of the universe. He's basically and, and and his another one of these crude accusations. Look, okay, the only way we have any sense of understanding is through religion. So once we kill God, we lose all understanding. I mean, that's the stupid part. Is that only a God can establish a value? It was a stupid premise. And his stupid premise is also that the universe is constantly changing and blah, blah, blah. No, the mechanisms are dependable and reliable. All that changes, quote, unquote, um, is as, 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 as it rolls. It collects different things, different bits and bites, and, you know, it makes different noises. But, I mean, they're all anticipatable. They're all understandable. The change isn't a morphing into something different. It's just what it does as it, it's a life cycle kind of change. It's like the change from seed to flower. It's not an ununderstandable changing. It's a clearly understandable changing. And um, uh, Nietzsche was clearly just like Nihilist, trying to blow up the whole concept of there existing anything to begin our conversation with. Uh, that, that is as if it, perception itself, like our senses, were lies. And it's just, in my opinion, absolute nonsense. As our senses were developed through evolution not to lie to us. There would be no advantage in us being deluded. We wouldn't be able to navigate the maze if we were given fake maze directions. Okay. Until next time.